so the first test we're going to do in strength material lab is bosons ratio and we're going to measure uh, aluminum and steel if you look at this this is the aluminum specimen we do have strain gauges on the longitudinal direction another strain gauge on the uh, lateral or the horizontal direction and we're going to connect the strain gauges to the strain indicator this is the strain indicator and we're going to talk about it in a second let me first install the specimen in the machine so it basically the first thing you do is to install the specimen in the bottom grip uh, i'm going to change the control now to the um, handset by pressing the the unlock now it's green now i can control the mts machine with the handset i need to move this up a little bit so i'm going to use the uh, arrow up going up going up all the way let me see and the best practice is to install this on the bottom grip first um, make sure that you have the strain gauge is facing the right side if you are putting the strain indicator on the right side like on the table if you have it on this side maybe you need to have it face it on the left side so first of all let me open the grip so i'm gonna open this guy and it's a little bit confusing okay so now clockwise you open it and then i'm gonna stall this on the bottom grip we need to move it more up and i always recommend to leave maybe a quarter inch gap in the bottom so this is not a good practice just leave maybe a quarter inch on the bottom or maybe half an inch and there you go now i'm gonna tie it now <clears throat> so let's tie this guy so I'm going by counterclockwise uh, and there you go again leave this quarter inch in the bottom and now we're done with that um, I'm going to open the bottom the top grip so let me open this guy and you need to slowly move the bottom grip down so let's go down now with this I'm going down again I'm going to use the uh, the arrow going down so let's move down again make sure the top grip is open that's at least you need like maybe a um, quarter inch or something let's say go down now I'm going down and it's the same practice you need to see leave a gap here so maybe this is very much the stop here uh, I want to go to the screen where we have the load so if you look carefully <coughs> on the screen we have load it says load uh, bound and cross head in inches and the cross head is very much the movement of the top grip on the Poisson's ratio it's not a factor later on we may use it but for now I want to focus on the load it says minus four that's very much zero and if, if you when you tie the specimen look carefully here I'm going to tie the specimen I'm going to tie the specimen and just remember the load there it says minus three and if you tie it more it's even increasing and the reason behind that when you tie the specimen you are very much applying a load on that specimen it's a tension force and if you tie it more now you are talking about a hundred bound already on the specimen and definitely we don't want to start the test with 150 or 140 bound right we have to release that load and to do that and it's extremely tricky and it's very sensitive on the handset we can use this wheel here it's very sensitive what you need to do to release that load is you need to move the top grip down and i'm talking about few millimeters I'm not talking about inches just few millimeters this wheel here is very sensitive if you just touch it you're talking about 200 pounds just by touching that wheel you have to be very sensitive move it down a little bit and by, by just touching the wheel now it's about in the range of maybe uh, 10 or 12 up to 15 pounds you can just you know that that's my zero and i will live with that okay again we're going to use the wheel not the arrows to release that load and now we're going to put back the handset in its position i want to connect the strain indicator so let me get here let me get this tool here so basically this is a strain indicator and you turn it on by pushing this power button here and if you look carefully there are four channels one two three four 
it can read simultaneously from four different strain indicators, strain strain gauges. On this test, we only need two strain strain gauges. So I'm going to do with the let's say here, blue and white is very much the uh, longitudinal strain gauge. So I'm going to connect it to channel number one, and to connect that, you need the first two slots, it's one, two, just the first two slots, and it doesn't need to be in order. Just insert this, the first one in the first slot, and just down, and the second one in the second slot, and it's not going in. Let's try again. Okay, that's good enough. And now you start to see a number here. Instead of off scale, you see as the, the initial reading of that strain gauge, and definitely we'll need to zero that. And now I'm going to have the second one, which is the lateral strain gauge. I'm gonna put it on the second channel. And again, you will need the first two slots. So this is number one. I'm gonna like this one. And the second wire going to the second slot. And I'm going to close it. And that's what you have here. And now you can see that there are numbers, the initial reading of the second strain gauge. And definitely you need to zero that. And to zero or to calibrate the strain indicator, the process is really very simple. If you read here, it says BAL, that's for balance. It's calibration. So we're going to click balance here. And then it says ready to auto balance. And it's kind, are you sure you want to balance that? And to do that, you need to click balance again. And now it goes through the four channels. And very much it's going to say cannot balance channel three or four. And that's, you know, obvious the reason because we don't have anything connected to three and four. And then it says, do you want to save that? And to do that, to save, it says REC. REC is for record. And now it says set up saved. And now very much you see the readings. It's four and one. That's very much a good zero starting point for us. One thing to remember, it says micro strain so everything is 10 to minus 6 so if you read minus 3 here this is minus 3 times 10 to minus 6 and very much we're ready to to start the the load the the test <coughs> if you notice here the load is uh, going to 50 you can if you want to do zero it again you can use the wheel just move the wheel a little bit down with this wheel and again it's extremely sensitive just touching it is um, 100 pounds and that will cause a change on the strain, strain reading. So I'm going to balance the strain reading again. And before that, I'm going to switch to the uh, software. And let me balance this again. So to balance this, I'm going to balance and balance again. And then cannot balance 4, 3, 4, that's fine. And after that, I'm going to save it. And we're ready to go now. Okay. Now to do the test, I want you to come here. Um, again, there are different methods here for each test. So I'm going to go to method, open method, and I'm going to scroll this down. And if you look carefully, it says Poisson's ratio test. This is the method I'm going to use for Poisson's ratio. So it's going to be Poisson's ratio test, and click OK, and then I'm going to click OK here, and we're ready to go. <clears throat> and the way how we do that, for aluminum, we're going to load up to 100 pound, stop, read the strain gauges, and then load again to uh, 200 pound, stop, all the way to 500 pound. For steel, we're going to use 200 pound increments. We're going to do 200, 400, 600, up to 1,000. Since this is aluminum, let's start with, uh, let's go to 100 pound. And this is the play button here. All what we have to do, just click play, and going to... Run the test. It's asked for the sample ID. Maybe um, you can say aluminum, maybe if you want. Just it doesn't matter. In fact, let's click OK here, and then uh, it sometimes ask you, do you want to uh, overwrite the existing file? Just say overwrite here. Should be OK again, and then special comment about the soft the specimen. Uh, again, this is really not important. The thickness and the width, it's not a factor in our test because we only measure strain, strain and we measure that with the strain gauges. So I'm going to just write anything. The thickness is 2 inches and the width or the thickness is 0.25 maybe. And the width is maybe 2 inches. Again, it's not a factor in our test. And then I click OK. 
and then it applies the loads and you can see the load is going up now going up 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 all the way to 100 I'm going to stop here once it says 100 I'm going to uh, stop very much this is very much my hundred again this is pause here I'm going to stop and I'm going to read now the strain strain so the first channel is the longitudinal it says here uh, 20 I think I missed this one it was maybe two or three so whatever you read here uh, just three re record it on the uh, on the board so this is 18 it says here one just put one there um, and after that you go to the second load so I'm going to 200 and we're gonna go and click, click the pause again so I'm going to click this and now it starts to go up again all the way to 200 once 200 again, I'm going to stop using the pause button here. 200, I'm going to stop at 200. So this is very much my 200. I'm going to stop and go back to the strain indicator and then read. This is 44 and this is minus 3. And we know why it's minus because you have shrinkage or shortening on the width while you have elongation, elongation on the length. And you keep doing this all the way to 500. Just stop, read, and put everything on the board, the longitudinal strain and the lateral strain. Once you're done with the test, and you want to release the load, the best thing if you want to release the load, now we're done here. Uh, let's say that you go all the way to 500. You can click here, stop. And if you click stop here, and then it says remove specimen. And the best way to do that is to release the load again. You can untie the top grip, and that way very much the load will go to zero. And that's the end of the Poisson's ratio. You can remove the specimen from the bottom grip, and don't forget to remove also the, from the strain indicator. So you need to remove all of this. And please do not touch the strain gauges. We don't want to lose the strain gauges because that way Kevin will be really mad. <laughs> So now very much we're done with this. Just install this, the steel specimen and you're ready to go. It's really very short test and that's it.